something about, you know, each senior, different member, different senior. Um, this year, I just asked them to answer a couple of questions, and uh, Sister uh, Walker is going to come up and uh, share those answers with you this morning.
you don't count. Okay. <laughs>
Someone asked me about uh, the senior uh, thing, and as I stated earlier, this is something that I uh, instituted about uh, 20 years, or maybe over 20 years ago. And someone wanted to know, well, what is a senior member? Well, uh, at what age is a senior member? And I said, I think it's up to the individual. Because I'm a senior member when we go to the movies. Me and my wife, and before COVID, we're going to the movies. I'm a senior member then. Amen. Uh, whenever I go to Golden Corral, I'm a senior member. Or when I go to pick up certain things at Walgreens, uh, I'm a senior member. And especially when we are traveling, I take out my AARP card and been able to save up to $15 a night on the hotel room. So uh, it's kind of up to the individual. Of course, we know what society says. And I do want to say this. For those young people who are out there that think the age of 30 is old, and I know there are some out there that do, wait until you turn 30. Those who think 40 is old, wait until you turn 40. And I can say the same for 50 and 60 and probably 70. Because in your mind it just doesn't seem that you are. Uh, that old or that age, I would say. I'm going to uh, be already doing it now. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, Yeah, we'll wait. We'll wait. But uh, <clears throat> again, uh, that's dealing with a senior. We want to look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 and see what the Lord has to say about those who we are honoring today. What does God have to say about those we are honoring today? In 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, let's look at the um, let's look at the second verse. The scripture says, We give thanks to God always for you all, making mention of you in our prayers, remembering without ceasing your work of faith and labor of love and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ, in the sight of God and our Father. We want to just take this, work, this, this verse one part at a time. In that third verse, he says, remembering without ceasing your work of faith. You know, <clears throat> uh, in the NIV version, I really like the way it's put, it says, Remember, we remember before our God and Father your work produced by faith. On last Sunday, we learned, as Reverend Parker preached, that faith without works is what? Yeah. It's dead. Faith without works is dead. So all the work you have done inside and outside of the church, outside of these four walls, were because of your faith in God. Faith without works is dead. So again, he says, we remember before our God and Father your work produced by faith. The next part of that verse says, and labor of what? Love. And in fact, we want to use for our subject this morning, I meant to tell you just a moment ago, uh, something that I used to hear Reverend Moe say a lot around here, and I know if you've been here, some have been here, we've been heard all these years, I know you've heard him say this a lot. 
It's a label of love. And that's what we use for a subject this morning. A label of love. And this is what he says in that 13th verse. And the NIV says, your labor prompt by love. You see, our love is for the Lord. Our love is directed to the Lord. Amen. For he says, if you love me, you'll do what? Amen. Keep my commandments. Amen. So our love is devoted to God. But it's manifest in what we do for others. Let's turn to Matthew chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25. Our love is devoted to God, but it's manifest itself in doing for others. Matthew chapter 25. Let's start at the 34th verse. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 25. Let's start at that 34th verse. The scripture says, Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For when I was hungry, you gave me meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. Naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and, vi and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee a hunger and fed thee, or thirsty and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger and took thee in, or naked and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick, or in prison, and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as you have done it unto one of the least of these, my brother, you have done it unto me. And so the Lord is saying to our seniors this morning who have served so many years, when you have done it unto the least of them, you have done it unto me. And so it's a what? It's a labor of love. A labor of love prompt by a labor of love that's prompt by uh, uh, the, the love that God has shed abroad in our hearts. Amen. So we have found, uh, we heard so many things shared this morning uh, that our seniors have done over the years, serving dinners to the, the needy, uh, teaching the word of God in Sunday school and vacation Bible school and, and just serving uh, as a deacon here, of course, you're serving God's people in so many ways, so many lives have been touched all through those years. And, and what is God saying? That this is how you're going to be remembered. And he tells us here in that very, uh, that 34th verse, Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. When you leave here, God has even more blessings for you when you get to heaven. And he's going to remember the work that you have done. Amen. So he continues on. Let's go back to 1 Thessalonians <clears throat> chapter 1 in that third verse. So he tells us here, our work is produced by faith. Our labor is prompted by the love that God has shared abroad in our hearts. And he goes on uh, to say to us in this, this chapter, in this third verse, he says, And patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ, in the sight of God and our Father. Amen. So we are inspired, you have been inspired by hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Because he has promised us what? He's promised us eternal life. Let's look at this same chapter, 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, and that ninth verse. The scripture says, For they themselves show of us what manner of entering in we had unto you, and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God. For all of us who have come to Christ 
we've turned away from the world. We've turned away from the idols of this world because all of us were serving something before we came to Christ. Even if it was yourself, yourself was your idol. So we turn from that. But look at that tenth verse. He says, and to wait for his son from where? Heaven. From heaven. We're looking for his return. And to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead. Even Jesus, which delivered us from what? The wrath, the wrath to come. So you see, you're inspired in hope. Are inspired by hope because of the promise that Jesus has left us. This is our inspiration for serving the Lord because we have what? Eternal life. And look at what he says at the end of that verse Deliver us from the wrath to come. Now, we all know what's going on in the world, what's been going on for nearly two years now the, uh, uh, the uh, COVID 19 virus. And we know that we are, we know, everybody knows somebody that has died from COVID-19. Right. And we also know there's a lot of destruction going on in the land today. Just this past week, that was a volcano that erupted. And this lava is pouring down on the community. You see lava flowing over into people's uh, swimming pools and over their homes. And we know there were uh, thousands of Haitians at the border because of destruction in that land, the earthquake that they've had in that land. And we know that many are running from drug laws in other countries to get into the United States. And, and there's so much commotion and confusion. You know, there are still people saying that uh, Biden should have won the election, that Trump should have won the election. And they just did a, a, a recall of another county in Arizona. And unfortunately, Biden ended up with more votes and Trump ended up with fewer votes. All this foolishness going on in the world today. And I'm going to tell you something. There are a lot of people, and I hope and pray that as we have preached about abounding in hope, I hope and pray that we are not allowing this to disturb us. We cannot allow the stuff that's going on in this world to disturb us. Because he just told us here in this third verse, and I like how the NIV said, and it says, and your endurance inspired by hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. Your patience, your endurance, what's keeping me going? My hope in Jesus Christ. The promise that has been made because he died on the cross for my sins. You've got to be looking for something better. Live your life to the fullest on earth. But you have got to be looking for something better. On the other side. And this is what he's telling us. And, and again, directly to our seniors. All of the work that you have done. And this is what's motivating you. Because he promised that he's going to deliver us from the wrath to come. I want to say this and we're going to move on. As we study in the book of Revelation, there's going to be a rapture of the church. And according to our study, the rapture can come at any moment. Amen. Yes, we are seeing some things happen. And we know over here in Matthew 24, he, he talked about wars and rumors of wars and, and famines and earthquakes and all of that. And especially false teachers, false preachers. He, he talked about all of that. And, and, and what happens is, or what's happening is, we're just getting a little taste of that now. The church is getting a little taste of that. Just look around at some of the things I just mentioned. Just look around. We're getting a taste of it, and we can see how, yes, how this stuff can actually happen. We can see how the mark of the beast can happen with all the technology that we have today. How this mark of the beast can happen. And how uh, news can spread so rapidly because of our technology. So we see all of this happening, but I want to tell you something, that as a Christian, we will be delivered from the wrath to come. Because God has a wrath that, my Lord, read the book of Revelation. A wrath is coming on this world. The Bible said that it's going to be so many dying at one point that blood is going to come all the way up uh, to the horse's mouth. 
not just in one area, all over. That much blood is going to be shed. We haven't come close to seeing a third of the, the waters being contaminated. Fish and all of that other stuff that's out there dying in the sea. A third of the vegetation, trees and everything being destroyed. There's so much that's coming upon this world. And then, of course, the mark of the beast. Yes, sir. Dealing with the great tribulation. You see, that's a seven-year period. And the latter half, that three and a half years is the great tribulation. Yes, but we don't have to worry about that because he just said he has delivered us from the wrath to come. And most importantly, from what? Hell! Most importantly, hell, because that's eternal. And there will be people saved during the tribulation period, according to the book of Revelations. But God has all of that under control. But for those who are laboring on this side, we labor with patience, our endurance, with hope, because of what the Lord has promised us. Amen. As we begin to close, we're going to ask you to, to look at 1 Thessalonians, 5th chapter. You in 1 Thessalonians, turn to the 5th chapter. <clears throat> As we read in this first chapter in the third verse, we see uh, a threefold combination. And, and as a child of God, you heard these three. Faith, hope, and love. We just looked at that in that third verse. A threefold combination. But look at chapter 5 and the eighth verse. The scripture says, but let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love and for a helmet, what? The hope of salvation, my Lord. The hope of salvation. And we know, as we have studied the scripture, that the warriors had a breastplate, a shield that would cover, and it was because it would protect them from uh, uh, their major organs, internal organs. It protected those organs. The liver, spleen, the heart, and so forth. The breastplate would protect. And it says here that it's the breastplate of faith and love. And we need that faith, the shield of faith. And of course, the love of God we've already seen shed abroad in our hearts. And for a helmet, the hope of salvation. Again, that's our hope. We got eternal life. So we're able to continue to do what God have us to do. This is a great work. I'm going to ask you to turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Again, we're looking at what? Faith, hope, and love. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. First Corinthians chapter 13. Look at what the scripture says. In that 13th verse. And now abided faith, hope, and what? Amen. Charity, which is what? Love. love. Faith, hope, love. These three. But the greatest of these is what? Love. It's love. You see, we initially we, 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 we're talking about a labor of love. A labor of love. And again, we're motivated by what Christ has done for us. We have that hope for eternal life. And we know he saved us from our sins. So it tells us here that the greatest of these is love. You see, in this 13th chapter, the chapter uh, uh, tells us all about love. He said, go I speak with the tongues of men and of angels. And, and if I have a love, I'm what a... A, a tinkling cymbal, a sounding brass. You know, it, it goes on to tell us it profits us nothing. Though I uh, give my body to be burned, though I give my gifts to the poor, you know, it, it means nothing if what? Love is not in it. It's all about love. And that 
second verse says, though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not love, I am what? I'm nothing. So all of your good works mean nothing if you don't have the love of God in your heart. You see, a preacher ought to be able to preach Sunday after Sunday and not get a dime. Because of what? Because of this love of God in his heart. This love for people to be saved. Love is what he's talking about. It says in that fourth verse, love suffers long in its kind. Love envieth not. Love vaunteth not itself. It's not puffed up. If you love, then you're going to what? You're going to endure. He said you suffer long. You endure some things. I hear it around here, especially when I first start coming to New Hope. Sometimes you have to give up the give up the right for the wrong. <laughs> you can be right. Give up the right for the wrong. But, but sometimes that other person may not be as mature as you in Christ. And you're what? You're suffering. In that respect, in other respects, that you suffer long, the scripture tells us, and is kind. You don't envy. Don't envy what someone else has. And most of all, he says there, and you're not puffed up, my Lord. There's so much here that he tells us, and if you really want to know about love, then you read this 13th chapter of Corinthians. So he tells us here that faith. Hope and love. But the greatest of these three is love. As we close, we'll ask you to turn to one more passage of scripture. Let's turn to Hebrews chapter 6. Hebrews chapter 6. We all know that God has blessed those who have labored today. We honor our seniors. We just want them to know we thank them for all of the hard work. And again, not looking for anything because they know what God has done for them and has prepared for them. We know that. We have uh, a gift bag that we want to give to them today that have some items in it. Just showing how we appreciate them. We also have a dinner prepared for our seniors today. And just remember what I said earlier. I'm a senior at uh, Golden Corral. So guess what? It works for me today. Because I'm going to get a dinner. So you're a senior when you want to be one. Amen? Amen? All right. We're going to close. We've done that, but I want you to know that God has something much greater. And not only for the seniors, but for all of us. And look at what he says as we close in Hebrews chapter 6 and that 10th verse. But God is not unrighteous to forget your work and what? Labor of love which you have shown toward his name. You did it in Jesus' name. In that you have ministered to the saints. When you taught vacation Bible school, you were ministering to the saints. When you taught Sunday school, you were ministering to the saints. When you served in the various capacities on the usher board, when you brought over your lesson in usher board meeting or matrons meeting, you're ministering to the saints. Amen. Amen. And you're what? Continuing to minister, even ministering at home to your children. You're ministering to the saints. And he said, I'm not going to forget your labor of love. Motivated by what God has done for you. And we desire that every one of you 
do show the same diligence, not just the seniors, but all of us, every one of you, show the same diligence. What diligence is he talking about? He's talking about that 18 years that we heard about. He's talking about that 45 years that we heard about, that 50 years that we heard about, the 47 years that we just heard about, the 59 years, the 61 years, the 63 years. That's diligence. You got people that are coming to the church and you ain't seen them in God knows how long. He ain't talking about those people. He's talking about those people that have endured because of their hope in Christ. Their hope for eternal life. He's talking about diligence to the full assurance of hope until what? Until the end. And then he says in that 12th verse that you be not slothful. Don't be lazy. But followers of them who through what? Here we go, here we go, here we go. Through what? Faith and patience inherit the promises. My Lord, you're going to inherit the promises of God. He done promised. Let me tell you something. We've had a lot of funerals. In fact, I don't know if y'all knew this. In fact, for the first time, and listen to this. I want y'all to hear this, and we're closed. For the first time in history, in the state of Alabama, more people died in the last year than were born. For the first time in history, more people died than were born. So a lot of funerals have taken place. And we do know COVID has played a role. But I want to tell you something. We have a hope beyond the grave. We've had and I don't want y'all to take this the wrong way. But I'm just somebody that I just believe what the Bible says. The Bible said there's a narrow road and there's a broad road. And the Bible said there are few people on the narrow road. And that road leads to eternal life. The Bible said most of the people on the broad road yeah. that's leading to hell. Yeah. It leads, the Bible said, to destruction. Yeah. With that being said, some of these homegrown ceremonies, yeah. that's the book. Yeah. Some of these homegrown ceremonies, yeah. they ain't going to hell. Oh, they didn't go to hell. Now that's between them and God. But I'm just saying what the book says. Everybody ain't going to hell. God wants us to go. He said, I don't want to see anybody perish. No one. He wants everybody to be saved. But like Reverend Parker said last week, you better have your receipt. Amen. Just being a member, I ain't going to get it. Partaking of us goods, that's it, whatever it sounds, or whatever, Costco, just partaking, that don't mean nothing. You got to know him. He's got to be your personal savior. And if you know him, then this is what he has. He has a great reward through faith and patience, endurance. You inherit that promise. And I do want to say one more thing. If you believe in your heart, and I want you to take this the wrong way. I'm saying this as a help, not a hurt. If you believe in your heart. That your loved one was in Christ, then you've got to believe 
what God says about your love one. Yeah, look, amen, amen. You got to believe that. Amen. If you were here a few Sundays ago and then the Bible said that his word is not going to ever fail, not even a jot or tittle. Amen. It's not going to fail. Amen. So if you believe your loved one was in Christ, your loved one is in heaven. Yes, amen. Your loved one is at peace. People say rest in peace. Everybody ain't resting in peace. Yes, but if they're in Christ, Amen. if they died in Christ, they received that promise. Yes, Not the wrath. Yes, but they're in heaven now. They, they don't want to come back. Why would you want, why would God offer us heaven when we got earth? Yes, Think about that. <laughs> why, why would he offer us heaven if we got this mess down here? So when any of you say, Lord, I don't want to go, I don't want heaven, I just want to stay down here. <laughs> you, if, you, if you're thinking like that, you haven't read this or you don't believe this. Right. If you want to stay here rather than go to heaven, you don't believe this. Because everything you got down here, it will fail and it's going to fail your eyes. Your jumping ability, uh, forming your words, remembering stuff, it's pain. And he's, and your aches and your pains, worried about this person, that person, and the other person. He offered you something far better. Car problems, plumbing ain't working, something wrong with your lights. I'm sitting up here on Peach Street the other day waiting on the light to change. Bam! I get hit from behind. I'm just sitting at the light. Oh, man. Oh, real. We got all kind of stuff we're dealing with. Then you got to deal with other people. So why would he offer us heaven compared to this stuff down here? And the Bible said it can't even compare. So your loved ones, they don't want to come back here. It's too much enjoyment, too much peace in heaven. Hey, we are fool. And actually in Isaiah, it even talks about, yeah, we didn't remember this stuff down here. Don't want to remember this down here. Talking about spiritual things. Yeah. We're talking about we're talking about perfection. Yeah. None of us are perfect. We wish we were, but none of us are. Yeah. We're talking about perfection, y'all. Yeah. Read the book. We're talking about the disciples the other day, and and, and, and Jesus, they done fished all night and caught them. He said, "We'll throw the net on the other side." What sense does that make? We ain't caught that now. We, it's still the same water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the man who spoke this world into existence, he can move some fish off of that one. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so many fish, the net broke. Right. And you don't want to be where he is? <laughs> My Lord. So why I said all that to say this. If your loved one has died in Christ, just remember that. They're better off. They don't need us. As he says, we ought to encourage one another with these words. Encourage one another with these words. He wants us to remember what we have on the other side. Isn't that something? Isn't it a blessing to know that our loved ones are with the Lord? They've gotten where we're trying to get. A labor of love. And I, I, I'm going to say one more thing. I'm done. For those of you who've ever heard Reverend Moe say that, just tell me before you leave. Just nod your head. I'm going to hear. Just nod your head. 
He's the always and it's the name of God. Yeah. And I thank God. Because we ain't looking for nothing down there. We ain't looking for a tip. We ain't looking for no money. I mean, God can give us that, yeah. But we are not to be hurt because our name went in the wheel. Because it's in God. It's in God's wheel. Amen? Because all you can get from a wheel is a little bit more of what you have, and it's going to be gone too. So, so, okay. so what? I'm still living, I'm still eating, I'm still sleeping, I still got clothes to put on, gas put in my car. So what? I didn't get it. I saw on this side on what's on the other side. Amen. 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 And I'm not because I believe that Jesus died Amen. on the cross for my sin and was resurrected the third day. And he promised that because he got up, to be absent from the body means to be present with. I believe that. I believe it. Amen. To death. Yeah. His word is going to be reassuring to us. Yeah. I remember before my dad died, I was in the hospital room and, and I heard him quote scripture after scripture after scripture. He, he was just about gone. His eyes was closed and, and he couldn't respond to me, but I could hear him. Yeah. He's going to bring us yeah. Yeah. to death. He said, I'll never leave you. I don't care how you leave here. I don't care how you leave. You ain't leaving by yourself. He said, I'll never leave. I'll never leave. Nor forsake. God is so good. He's so good. And just think, we are one of the few. So many people, they ain't hearing this. Because the Bible said they're blind. Yeah. And all they can see is what's out there. Yeah. That's all they can see. They can't see. <laughs> the doors of the church are open.